We did it. We did it. Okay. So I think I'm here. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Teresa Coates. I am the national educator for Shannon Fabrics. We are doing something different this time, obviously, and um, I'm hoping it's working all right. So we're just going to plow forward. And you guys let me know if you can hear me okay, if you can see me okay. We're going to try some new camera stuff. It's going to be super fun. I am really excited to be here. Like I said, my name is Teresa Coates, and I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. And we've been doing So Together Tuesdays for a while now, for I guess about nine months, 10 months. And uh, we took a little break over the Christmas, uh, the holidays, and now we are back with a whole new look and new ways of doing things. And I'm really excited to be here. So we're gonna kick it off today with a Cuddle 101. So if you are new to sewing with Cuddle or you've been struggling with it, or you know, you just wanna know some more about it, that's what we're gonna talk about today. So we're gonna talk all about all the tools that we need, how we can sew with it, how we can cut with it, and a whole bunch of fabrics. So if you have been wanting to know more about this fabric, this is the place. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna make, have some questions as we go, so please comment. We'll do questions as we go, but I'm gonna sort of hold comments until the end of each little section that we do, and then we'll answer questions. So um, I'm just gonna talk and tell you everything I know about Cuddle Fabric, and then we'll go from there, okay? So make sure that you share the video. We're gonna do a giveaway as we always do. You can actually, um, or go to our blog. So the blog is at Shannon Fabrics. There should be a link in the comments about where to go for the blog. And you can download a paper that we did, a little reference sheet, okay, that'll have some of the information that I'm sharing today, including the tools and all that good stuff, and some more information on using the fabric. That's on our blog. You can also, while you're there, you can enter to win 12 blankets that we're giving away. So we're giving away finished Lux throws. And so you can enter to win that. Okay. So there's two different giveaways today. So one is on the blog. Make sure you enter that one. You can win a finished blanket. The other is going to be here. So if you share this video with your sewing friends, we will pick a winner at the end of anybody who has shared the video and you will get a free kit to make your own cuddle quilt. Okay. So Make sure you share it. Make sure you tell your friends. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so excited that everybody is here. It's super fun to see so many, so many numbers up there. Like I can't see your faces, but I can see your numbers. And I'm really happy you're here. Thanks for the comments and the uh, the early welcome. So we're hoping that'll work out really well for us and for you. Okay, so let's start with tools. I think we covered everything I needed to, right? Okay. <laughs> Hawk's always here to like back me up and make sure I know like what's going on. Okay, so we're gonna start with tools. So if you've downloaded the um, the paper, if you haven't, you can go do it now. Click on another another tab and you're gonna get it and you're gonna get this little thing and it has a, all the list of the tools that we want, okay? So my favorite tools um, the, and the things that you're gonna need for working with Cuddle. So the first thing, the thing that is really important will make a huge difference in how you work with the fabric is the walking foot, okay? So a walking foot, and I have two of them here that are my variation. So this is for my baby lock, obviously. It's actually a mm, digital dual feed, I think is what they call the technical name for it. It plugs in, obviously, and it runs with a little uh, band across here that pushes the fabric through. This is for my Bernina, which looks a lot more like other walking feet. Okay. So I want you to just show the difference. So this is on baby lock and brother have this guy, which is a big guy and works a little bit differently, but is really, really good. And it's the one I use on the machine most of the time for Sew Together Tuesday. This is for my Bernina. And I'm going to show you just a couple of things about this. So walking feet generally look like this. The way that it hooks onto your machine might be a little bit different. So this is a Bernina. So it kind of comes up into the little cone thing on the Bernina, but normally it'll have like a little kind of thing that comes around the shank. Okay. So this goes around the shank of your machine. This part will go around your needle screw. Now this is really important that you get that around the needle screw as you put it in, because this is what will actually lift this whole thing up. So what it will do is lift this guy. So when you're, when it's walking across the fabric, this will actually lift up and keep going across the fabric. What it does is helps bring the fabric through the machine. All right. So if you are not using a walking foot, I'm going to tell you that's the first thing you need to do is go get yourself a walking foot. OK, get one from your local dealer, all that sort of stuff. All right. It's a great, great thing to have with working with Cuddle and is totally a game changer. This one is a little bit different because these uh, parts right here, usually they're little grippy bits. And with the Bernina, they're just kind of they have some traction. So they grab your fabric. Some a lot of the other ones will actually have like little teeth on there. 
All right. So if yours looks different than that, that's the only reason why is because, you know, they're all a little different for a machine. The big thing is make sure that your, uh, the little arm here is over the needle screw and that it's going to work right through. It's going to bring that fabric right through your machine. Okay. So this, this is a game changer in what you want. So make sure you've got your walking foot. If you don't have one, go buy one. All right. The other thing we're going to need is, let's see if I can move these things out of the way. Get this in there. So this is um, the Schmetz. Uh, 9014 stretch needle. All right. So we are working with a knit fabric. P uh, Cuddle is a polyester knit fabric. And so it's going to work through the fabric differently, or it's going to work differently with your needle than a regular cotton. So if you're a quilter, you might think that you need to have like, just your universal needle. But honestly, you need to have a stretch needle because it is a stretch kind of fabric. This makes a big difference. And a lot of times people don't want to actually get a different needle. They don't want to change the needle on their machine. It makes a huge difference because what happens when you're using a different kind of needle that isn't made for knit fabrics. And I can't tell you the magic and how they make the needle different, but it is different. There's something about with the uh, back of the, the part of the back of the scarf, I think is what they call it. It's different. And it brings the, the thread through in a way that actually works with knit fabrics. If you use a universal you're very likely to have skip stitches. So if you've been working with the fabric and you've just been using your regular needles and you keep skipping, this is why. And this is really, really important, especially if you want to have a strong seam or if you're doing top stitching. And if you're top stitching and your, your stitches are skipping, it's super frustrating because you've really got to go back and take it all out. This will solve that problem. So make sure that you're using a fresh 9014 stretch needle. We use the Schmetz brand and I absolutely love them. They are well worth the... Um, the cost of replacing your needles often. So make sure that you're doing that, okay? All right, next was pins. So there are a couple kinds of pins that I like. They're both by Clover, okay? So we've these are the box set that I like a lot. These are stronger, and somebody just messaged me today and asking the difference. So these are the ones that come on a card, okay? They have a red and a pink back. Uh, one side is pink and one side, well, coral and one side is red. I'm um, not sure exactly the colors, uh, but these are a medium weight. These are a heavy weight. So these are the ones that I recommend if you're going to do a lot of work with cuddle and especially if you're going to do cuddle strip quilts, these guys are the best. They are really extra strong. That's what this is here, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, here we go. So here's one that is the extra strong. You can see it doesn't really bend. Okay. This is the medium weight. I'll show you that one. Okay. And that bends quite a lot. So that's the difference. These are really good for working with the cuddle strip quilts because they'll go through a lot of fabric without any problem at all. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit about pinning. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know, double pinning is a thing and we will use these strong uh, flower head pins every time. All right. So pins, we got those. Check. <laughs> thread is important. Okay. We use a medium weight, uh, like I think it's 50 weight thread. It's polyester. So and this is the kind that I use from Mettler. Generally, I use this medium gray for almost everything. I'm going to take the plastic off so you can see the color a little bit better. It's kind of blowing out just a tiny bit. There we go. That's better. Um, so this is a medium gray and I use it for almost everything. And it works really, really well for most colors of fabric. The thing with cuddle is it just sinks right into it. So you're never going to see the color again, which is great. If you really want it to match and you're using a white fabric, you can use white thread. If you're using a dark fabric, you can use a black or dark gray or a navy. All right. So polyester thread. This is important because the uh, polyester thread will make a big difference in how strong it is. And so if you are using a cotton thread, what happens a lot of times is it'll pop. OK, and it doesn't always do that. And sometimes you can get away with it for a long time before your cotton is going to your cotton thread will pop on you. But it totally can, and especially if you're doing it something that you're going to give it to a little kid or that it's going to get a lot of wear and tear. So if you're making a little blanket, for instance, and a child stands on the corner of it and tugs it, it's likely to pop those stitches if they're made out of cotton. Polyester has a little bit of stretch, so it will actually stretch with that. So you don't need to do a stretch seam. You just need to use polyester thread. All right. And that will make a big difference. All right. So after thread, we've got scissors, scissors. So we're going to talk at the end of this about how to cut the fabric. 
but I'll show you something that show you some tools that are really important. We cut the fabric different depending on which kind of cuddle it is. So as we go through the cuddles later, I'm going to talk to you about which one I would cut it with and why and for which projects. All right. So the big important thing are the scissors. And these are the Kai scissors. So these are from Kai. These are from Fomori. And these are uh, Karen K. Buckley's. The thing that unites all of these is when they have nice size handles that I like, but they also have micro serrated blades. Okay, so I don't know if we can get in there and show them, but there are micro serrations in these little blades that will grab the fabric and help cut it. So that's the that's the unifying thing with all of these is that's what you need to have when you're working with cuddle fabric is because it will grab the fabric much, much better. All right. So micro serrated scissors. I like the small handle and the little blade because when we're doing it, we're going to take little cuts. So little bitty cuts are the key. And so I just need a short blade and nice comfy handles. All right, so I just use these little scissors. All right, next on my list was the blades. So there's a couple of different different that are available. If you've watched uh, Sew Together Tuesdays very much, you have totally seen me use this blade. I love it. This is the SAC-1 from Ulfa. It is a, it's kind of a blend between a box knife and an X-Acto knife. So if you're familiar with those, it's actually listed as an artist's knife. It has this really nice fine point, which works super duper well for cutting just the backing of the Lux Cuddles. All right, I love this thing. So the thing that I like about it is it has a sharp point. I can snap these blades off so that I can just keep replacing it as I go. So every time it gets a little bit dull, I can snap a blade off and it's not a not a big cost to me. And the mess, the difference in the mess is amazing. And we will show that, like I said, at the end, we'll talk a little bit more about cutting and I'll give you some examples. The other one that you could do is also an old thumb. And this is the uh, ESK1 knife. And this is more like a little safety blade. So you can see down there at the end, the little shiny bit down there that is the knife part okay so this is a little bit more this is a safety one i think it's what they call it, is a safety blade so you're not as likely to accidentally cut yourself with it uh, so it's great for beginners or for people who are less comfortable with the blades it works really really well for the cuddle and you can't cut too deep because that blade is so short you can't actually cut into your mat which is great so and that comes with this cute little like egg holder <laughs> All right. So those are both Ulfa tools and I really do um, love them. This, this thing has been a game changer in using it for the Lux Cuddle. All right. So then what did I have next? I have to look at my little thing. Oh, then I have rotary cutter, just a regular old rotary cutter. Uh, so I have a 45 millimeter rotary cutter. I also have a 60 millimeter. I tend to cut my cuddle no more than two layers at a time. So the 45 is always fine for that. Um, but the 60 millimeter, 60 millimeter is good if you're going to be cutting the thicker fabrics. I tend to only cut the cuddle three with the rotary cutter. So that's our, our thinnest one. Okay. All right. So after the rotary cutter, then we've got pens. If you've watched again, like I said, then you will know this is how I do it. And I mark it on the back with a pen. So I use a felt tip pen. This is a friction marker. So this is also a felt tip pen that's from friction. So these one, these will come off with heat. I tend to just use my standard Sharpies. I use a black for the back of light fabrics and the gray for the back of darker fabrics. You can also use a chalk marker. So that's what this guy is, if I can get it to open up. This is just a little chalk marker, Taylor's chalk that you can draw down the back of the fabric if you want to. I will say that I have tried using the uh, Choco Liner from Clover, which I really love for other products or projects, but I find that it kind of snags the back of the knit fabric. So I use a uh, just a tailor's chalk, right? So Sharpie pens, felt tip pens. You can also use a ballpoint pen, but I tend to like those better. Then we have Wonder Clips. Wonder Clips are also from Clover, which I love. And they have two sizes. So we have the regular Wonder Clips and then we have the Jumbo Wonder Clips. Okay. The one, these we use the, for binding is mostly what I use them for. I can also use them for Lux throws. Um, you'll find that when you don't have to hold it super tight, the Wonder Clips are great. And they're also great for just kind of tacking down a little bit more as you go. All right. So if, as you watch through all of our Sew Together Tuesdays, you'll see I kind of use these... Uh, I intersperse them into my into my clipping. All right, so those are the big tools. We have a couple more. We have the By Annie Stiletto, which is 
probably that and the Ulfa blade <laughs> are my two big game changers in being able to work with this fabric. The by any it's a stiletto and pressing tool, I believe is what they call it. I love this tool because this long metal piece is long, sharp, and it holds my fabric really well. It's also sandblasted, so I can hold it against the fabric. And we'll talk about that a little bit when we're going through which ones I love this for. Okay, the other thing is it doesn't roll because it's got a little flat spot on it, so it's not going to fall off my table. And it does have a flat little end that I've got my initials on that you can use to sort of press things with when you need to. Okay, so I love this tool. This will make, if you have trouble getting your fabric to feed through at all even if you're using your walking foot this thing will be a game changer okay this will make all the difference in getting your fabric to work through beautifully all right so that and then the last thing is the 505 spray if i can find the front of it there we go show you close up 505 spray is from odif okay it is the only basting spray i will use See if we can move this so you guys can get a better light with it Ta -da. there we go the 505 spray, it is a temporary adhesive. It works really, really well. And I use it all the time for strip quilts. Okay, is what I use that for most. You can also use it when you're doing self-binding blankets and need that middle to hold. All right. But this is the best brand for it. I love this, um, this brand. They have some other really great sprays. But this spray doesn't smell and it washes out. And that to me is exactly what I'm looking for in a basting spray. Okay. All right. So there's all our tools. Do we have any questions on the tools real quick? Um, Michael will send over some questions for me if we have them. Um, and then we can move forward to talking about fabric. So let me see if we have anything. Okay. Um, all right. So if you have any questions about the tools, pop them in there. I'm at the end. I'm totally going to answer all of the questions that you have. So if you have any, leave them and we'll answer at the end. All right. Uh, okay. So Next, let's talk about fabric. All right, that's what we're here for. So now we know all the tools and really the tools make such a big difference in how you work with the fabrics. One of the things that I've really found is that if you don't have the right tools and techniques, it's going to be a frustration and that's not what we want. Cuddle is actually really, really easy to use as long as you have the right tools and techniques. So that's what we're talking about today. So those are all the tools that I recommend. Of course, there are others that I use sometimes, but those are the big ones. And if you want to work with cuddle fabric, those are important to have. All right. Okay. So cuddle. Cuddle, you probably, I have a whole bunch of headers that I'm going to show you guys today. So this is what our sales reps use to show off the fabric. And so I got these from the office so I could show you guys a bunch of variety. These here are um, some of our cuddles. We actually have, I don't, I don't I actually know, well over a hundred, uh, uh, well over a hundred different colors, maybe over two. I don't know. Somebody, somebody can pop in and tell me how many colors we have a ton of colors. Okay. And then we also have, uh, what? Michael the camera over. Uh, oh, Michael, switch the camera over. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Um, so we have a bunch of different fabrics. These are the colors that we have for C390, which is our wide. And so we have we have a variety of different uh, styles of fabric. I'm going to take this off. There we go. And uh, so these are the C390s. So these are our wides, but we also have tons and tons more that are available in just the regular fabric. So our regular cuddle, which we come to sometimes call regular cuddle, we call it flat cuddle, smooth cuddle, C3, cuddle three, all of those are talking about the same thing. And that we have in a lot of different colors. And that is 60 inches wide. This one is, um, these are the variety that we have that are 90 inches wide. Okay. Um, somebody had a question there. I just saw it was about using the, the FOF has a, I think it's called an IDTIFT. Oh, um, it's the internal walking foot and you can absolutely use that. I do recommend using a walking foot if you can. All right. Okay. So, um, we can sneak back to those questions later as well. All right. So cuddle three like I said, it's a it's a microfiber plush fabric. It's a knit, okay? So it's 60 inches wide. We have some that comes in 90 inches wide. The thing that you want to remember about cuddle is that it stretches widthwise. It does not stretch lengthwise. 
okay? Doesn't stretch this way, does stretch this way. And it will stretch quite a lot. So this is something to keep in mind, especially if you're trying to figure out if it's our fabric or not. That's one way that ours differs. We talk a little bit in that little uh, the handout that I made for you guys about the difference between our fabric and other minkies. Minky is just a kind of fabric and Cuddle is our brand name for it. So you will find other minkies that are not made by us and they are not Cuddle. So if anything has the Cuddle name on it, it is made by Shannon Fabrics. And we call our, we have Cuddle and we have Lux Cuddle. And we'll talk about that. But that's that's the big difference is we have a brand name for it that we call Cuddle. And it is just a kind of minky. All right. But that's why you can tell our minky from other people's minkies. All right. So we have all of the solid colors. We have a ton of them. Useful for all sorts of things. But oh my goodness. Like if that's the only thing you know about Cuddle is like the solid color colors you are in for a treat because we've got a ton of stuff. We have lots and lots and lots of prints. I can only show you a few today. I'm just going to show you a few different um, little headers that we have and talk about the different kinds. So we have two different ways that we print cuddle. So we have traditional printing that we have done for a long time. And a couple of years ago, we started doing digital printing. And so that gives us a different thing. So I'm going to show you, show you over here, uh, some of our traditional prints. Okay, so these are traditional prints. They're on a Cuddle 3. They're three millimeter uh, nap is what that is with the knit backing, a little bit of stretch, not so much stretch. Okay, these are printed just on top and they'll always have this little thing where it's sort of, you can see the nap go one way or the other. Okay, so we have some super cute little prints. I'm just going to show you these that I've got since they're here. So we have some that are like very child friendly and some that are a little more grown up. And these are a bunch of the more kiddish ones. Okay, super cute. But you can see, and this will happen on the solids too, is that if you rub the nap the other way, you get what we call zebra prints. So when we're putting these together, we always want to try to get them so that the nap goes in the same direction. Something to keep in mind when you're working with the fabric. So that is our traditional printing. This is our digital printing. I'm going to show you just side by side so you can sort of see the difference in the printing style. So one, this ends up being a little bit of a shorter nap. And so it's uh, it's not quite as thick. So I can show you the difference this way. See if we can get those to show. Can we see that? Oh yeah. Okay. So this is a digital and this is a cuddle three. So this is going to be a little softer and fluffier than the digital cuddle. And it's just how it's made. It is what it is. But what happens when we get that shorter nap is we still get the super soft feel, but we also get really sharp lines. So the printing ability is just really different between the two. All right. So these are some of our new ones that are just coming out. I think these are just hitting the store now. And uh, so let me show you. This is one of my favorites. Look at this cute little dino in the purple and green. Oh, my goodness. So cute. Okay. But we get to have a lot more sort of realistic printing with the digital cuddles. All right, so you'll be able to tell the difference when you feel them, but they are just as soft and yummy. All right, so these are just more of the digital prints and you can see we can get a lot more colors in there. And that's really the highlight. So it's a it's a more colors and uh, a crisper finish to it. And that's why we do the digitals and the traditional printing. All right, so we have a lot of those. So if you see a digital cuddle, now you know what you're gonna get. It's a little bit, it feels slightly different because it's a little bit thinner, um, but works exactly the same way. All right. So we have batiks. Did you know we have batiks? Who knew? Um, if you've been following us, you knew. But we've got these great batiks that are actually printed batiks. So they're not traditionally made in a batik style, but they are printed so they look by, like batiks. So if you're a quilter and you love batik quilts, this is the way to go. Okay, so we've got a bunch that are printed. Okay, these are printed batiks. Print, batik prints, I guess is what we would call it because they uh, look like batiks, but they are not. Okay, they are absolutely beautiful. These are gorgeous for making a quilt out of, and we have some tutorials on how to do that, how to do traditional quilt making with cuddle fabrics. And like I said, these are a digital. Okay, so you can see how crisp and lovely that is. We also have some that are like solids. Okay, so let me pull these back out. And then lay that out. There we go. And so we've got these colors up here that are printed solids. And these are the coordinating colors for those prints. So it makes for a beautiful, beautiful batik style quilt. And these were great for backings. They're 60 inches wide. Or you can use them for the whole, the whole thing. 
which they're great. Okay, so that's also a digital. So we've got the print, we've got the solids, we've got the prints, and then we also have embossed. So this is another variation that we've got. Let's see if I can move this. Okay, so embossed is another variation we have. We don't have a lot of them, but we do have a nice little selection and they're sort of, they add a little bit of visual texture to it. That's actually physical texture too, but for quilts, for strip quilts and that sort of thing, these are great. For also, you can use them for self-binding blankets and uh, any sort of like accent fabric that you want to use. They're really lovely. So these have, um, sorry, I'll show you over here. We'll get you close. Okay, and these are sort of cut out in there. So they actually have like a physical texture as well as a visual. I really love this Paisley one too. That's one of my one of my favorites. All right. And these are these are great. We also have a few varieties of the hearts. Somebody was asking about these recently. So we have a couple of hearts and a couple of stars. All right. So those are super fun. The other thing that we have, oh, I forgot to talk about dimple. We also have dimple, you guys. I forgot to talk about that. I forgot to get a header for it. So we don't have any dimple to show you except for this tiny little scrap that I have. The dimple is another kind of cuddle and it's just, um, it has these embossed, embossed is not the right word, these little um, dots on it that make it, you know, cute. I'll put it over here. You can show it. Okay. So the, the dimple is used a lot by a lot of different people. It tends to have... Uh, a two-way or a four-way stretch. So it tends to stretch a little bit more in both directions than traditional cuddles. I'm going to see if I can get this to stretch and I'll show you like, burp. okay. And then if I stretch it this way, it still stretches. Um, and it's because those little circles are sort of flattening is what does that stretch, but it makes it so it's a little bit more difficult to work with sometimes. Okay. So the other thing that I really love that we have that's still in that like flat cuddle, cuddle three department is the sparkle cuddle. And if you have not seen this, seriously, you guys, this is amazing. Look at how great that is. Okay, sparkle cuddle, sparkle cuddle glitter. It's really hard for me to say. It's also really amazing. So we have it in a couple of different varieties. Um, so this one is we have it in gold and silver flex. So this one is actually gold. Uh, looking up on the screen, I can sort of see it showing up a little bit more silverish, but this is a gold on here that's very clearly gold in real life. Um, the rest of them are a mix of gold and silver. And they kind of, I can't tell whether they're hearts or triangles on there, but they, they sort of look like hearts. And I, I want to think that they are because they're really cute. Um, but there's a whole variety of different colors that we have. These are amazingly soft. So one of the things about this stuff is that the glitter doesn't come off. I can rub and rub and rub and the glitter is not going to come off on me. Okay. It's great for that. And it's just as soft as regular cuddle. So that glitter is put on by magic and stays there forever. It's great. And this is a new one that we have that is a multicolor sparkle. So see if I can find what the name is. It is Sparkle Cuddle, Cuddle Glitter Multi is what they call it. Um, so if you want to look for it, that's what you're going to have to look for. And it's really, it's just lovely. And this one has the multicolored sparkles on it. So you can see you get like a little bit of a rainbow effect on there. And that's a new one that's just hitting stores now too. So if you haven't seen that one, there's a reason why you haven't seen that yet. And it's because it's just getting out there. Okay. Absolutely gorgeous, though, and super fun. So all of these are the flat cuddles or the regular cuddles, as I like to call them. And you're going to work with them basically the same way. This is something you're going to cut with a rotary cutter. You're, um, you're going to be able to use it for all sorts of things. It's great for the blankets, for quilts. You can use it for hoodies, for all sorts of things, um, different apparel. The sparkle cuddle is, uh, I had a friend who used it in, she intermixed it with some cotton quilt fabric or quilting cotton fabrics and made a quilt out of it and it was gorgeous and it just added this neat little sparkle to it which was wonderful so you can really combine the fabrics and do all sorts of fun things with them all right so those are all the flat cuddles or regular cuddles all right okay do we have any questions on that we can send them let me see if i there was an interesting question some folks noticed mm -hmm. that the samples were cut with pinking shears and is that something that you would normally recommend or is that just because they're the, the header samples that's a good question. And the reason they're cut like that is because they actually like in the um, in the warehouse where they make the headers, they actually cut it with like a guillotine sort of cutter that comes down with that. It doesn't really matter. I think that the thing with cutting it with the um, sort of the pinking sheer look is that it will make it so it doesn't curl at all. 
Okay, so it's less like, likely to curl mm. because it has those little edges. I don't cut them with pinking shears, I think ever. I think I've used my rotary cutter with it once it has like the pinking shear blade on it. But honestly, like it's really, yeah, a straight cut is totally fine. It isn't really gonna make any difference because, because cuddle is a knit fabric, it isn't ever going to ravel. So a lot of times when we're using pinking shears, it's because we don't want the fabric to fray or to ravel. And so we just, we cut it with the pinking shears and it will keep better. With knits, you don't have to do that. You can leave it a straight cut edge and it's never going to fray or ravel at all because it's the kind of fabric it is. It's just totally gonna stay just like that. Which is why when we do self binding blankets, we don't have, we can just do raw edge. We do our self, um, when we do the binding for cuddle quilts, we also do that with a raw edge binding. So we just bring it over and stitch it down. Works beautifully and it won't ever fray. And people always worry about that. It's totally not gonna happen. All right, okay. We see it was, uh, do I ever use wonder tape to keep Minky from curling while sewing was the question. And uh, the answer is no, I don't. Um, I do fine with it. I just know not to stretch it. So that question sort of relates to after you've cut it and you stretched a bunch, let me show you real quick. All right, so let's see if I've got, so here we've got a little piece of fabric and this one has been cut. Okay. And you can see it's nice and smooth where I cut it. Now, if I take it, I'm just going to do it on this side because I just, I just cut it. So now I stretched it a bunch and see how it rolls. Mm. So if you don't stretch your fabric, it's not going to roll. The more you stretch it, the more it's going to roll up on you. All right. So that's, that's part of that is it's a knit fabric, so it'll tend to do that. You can see it, it still wants to do that. It still wants to kind of roll in on me. So if this, if you're playing with your fabric a lot before you get to sewing it, it will do this and you'll kind of have to fight that. If you don't, it will never do it. Also, it won't really do it along the lengthwise edge because it doesn't have stretch. So that will only happen along your widthwise edges that have the stretch. Okay, <laughs> there you go. And now you know, the more you know. I feel like I just like reverted to my childhood there more you know. Um, okay, so um, any suggestion for when the walking foot catches on the back of the fabric when sewing? So that is from the other kind of walking foot that I said that has teeth on it. And that will definitely happen sometimes. What I have done is I have actually taken a little emery board or very fine sandpaper and just sanded those little burrs off. That's what's happening. Sometimes if you've bought a cheap replacement, That'll be the cost. Uh, so you kind of have to fix that. But if you buy a good walking foot from the like the brand of the machine, if you buy a Bernina walking foot or you buy a Baby Lock or Brother or whatever, Janome, whatever machine you have, if you buy their walking foot, you're less likely to have problems. It's usually from a, um, like a knockoff version. But sometimes the cheaper ones will do that anyway. And just like I said, take a little bit of sandpaper or an emery board and file that nice and smooth. Okay. I know some people have used uh, tissue paper or other things over the top of it to let the foot catch to that, but I just prefer to take care of the problem itself. Okay. Are we ready on for the next one? We have a bunch of fabric, you guys. Like I got a ton, a ton. All right. Oh my goodness. Here it comes. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, check it out. Okay. <laughs> Let's start with this guy. So here's, here's the big header. We'll lay this out so we can see it nice. So this is our rose cuddle. Okay. So rose cuddle or Lux cuddle rose is called is has been around for a long time and people really love this. And it's useful for lots of different things for blankets and for like strips in the quilts. And I've seen it used for lots of stuffed animals, super duper cute self binding blankets. You can absolutely use it for binding on your quilts. It is great. And uh, it's available in lots of different places. This one is one of the more messy ones. So when we talk about cutting, this is one. And it's because the nap goes in all sorts of different directions. You can see there's also a difference in the shine of them. So some are shinier than others. And it tends to be that the darker colors will have more shine, more sheen, I guess you would call that. Is that the right word, huh? Sure. <laughs> Sure. It's sparkly. He's, it's more sparkly. So the, the lighter colors tend to be a little flatter, a little more matte, and the darker colors tend to be a little bit more, more sparkly and shiny. All right. This is a great one. Another one that you're going to see that's like that is the rose cuddle that is frosted. Yep. Frosted rose. All right. This stuff is super cool and great in quilts where you're going to combine this with another color because it has this background fabric. So this color that's on the back, you can actually find coordinates with it. And then when you coordinate this solid 
with this front, it looks absolutely beautiful because the color kind of pops through. So we have it in a, this coral color, the blue. Okay, really, really lovely. So do we have that in here? Yeah, look. See if you put these two together, you can see it kind of pop through. It's beautiful. Okay. I love it. So this is another variation that you can use. We have a few of these where you actually use, we have like a frost on it that will give it a different color that works really well for combining the different fabrics together. All right. So one of the other ones that people absolutely love and that you will find in a lot of stores. So some of these you're going to have to really look for. Okay. And then a bunch of these that I'm talking about here at the beginning are more common. You're going to find it a lot of different quilt shops and you can easily ask your local quilt shop if they have it or if they can get it for you. Most quilt shops want to know what you want. So please tell them and they'll uh, most likely get it for you. All right. So hide is another one that is used a lot and it's used in almost all of our quilt kits. And it is a very easy to work with fabric, okay? The thing about Hyde is it has done uh, really well. It's super popular. Oh, it's what I used for the little the little lion here. So I was going to show you guys this. So this little lion is made out of the, the Hyde. So is my cute little, oh, my elephant isn't, what was this? Oh, this one is too. Let me grab this guy. And this little Kimber Bear is made out of the Hyde as well, okay? Super cute little guy. All right, so this this fabric works really well for lots of different fabric or lots of different projects. Okay, but we have all of those colors, and but wait, there's more. So we have just a ton of these fabrics, a bunch of colors in the hide. This is a great go-to. So if you are looking for something for the back of your quilt or for a self-binding blanket, anything where you need a coordinating color for a, a print that we have, you're going to probably find it in the hide. It really is. There's just a huge variety of colors and they just kind of match with everything. So one of the things that got asked recently was on our I Love Cuddle group, which you haven't joined, you really should be there because we all just talk about how much we love cuddle fabric. And uh, one of the questions that was there was how to find a match for a print. And I'm going to grab a print Okay, so if you are, let me see. So I'm going to grab one and hope that we have the actual color for it. So is this, uh, I want to see if we have a denim. I think that might be what this is. Um, so we have, so this one is labeled as Mighty Jungle Denim. It'll coordinate with the denim. This is the To the Rescue Scarlet, which will match with scarlet which i think is that one there okay so if you have a print and it has a name the name that's at the end is the coordinating color okay so that's really important to remember that if there's a name at the end of it that's what it's going to match so like we have the aeroplanes navy roar teal so the roar this one will go with the teal fabric that we have so they will coordinate and you can find the matching uh the matching hide or the matching cuddle three all right, so that's important to remember is that you have that opportunity to find the exact coordinating print. Oh my gosh, it's so much fabric. Okay. <laughs> it's just a little bit here. It's just a little bit, but we have a ton of highs and just remember that, that when you are looking for a coordinating color, if you can, you can usually find it in C3, so the cuddle three, and you can find it in hide. And those two, we have, as you can see, a ton of colors in. All right. So we also do this thing. So I wouldn't want, oh, where are you guys? Over here. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I can't see where I'm at. Um, so with the hide, it's kind of interesting because um, we have a few of them that are variations of that. So there's hide, which is the solid color, but then we have a few others that are basically the same sort of design, which means they'll work exactly the same, but in different uh, colorways. So this is one, I'll lay this one down for you. This is Heather which you can see is the same sort of design as the hide, but it has this lighter color at the tips. I absolutely love this one. Heather is really seriously one of my favorites. I've used it for a bunch of stuff, including my little elephant. I'll bring him down so you guys can see him. Hi, Ellie. Okay. There's Ellie. And this one is made out of the Heather Fog is what that is. So it's this, this one here. Okay, so that's this fabric, and then I obviously used a C3 for his feet and stuff. Um, but these work wonderful for stuffed animals, and there is just a huge variety in those in those colors. All right, so the hide is the hide, the heather. Here's another one that's basically the same thing. 
which is the sorbet. Okay, and this one is a fun one because it's got all sorts of colors in them. So check those out. Okay, crazy, right? Super fun, super fun. And these are a nice mix of the different colors that are available. Like I said, it's the same uh, design. Like the fabric is made the same way. So it's totally usable for uh, anything that you would use hide in. Okay. All right. So there's that. Oh, we're ready for more. Here comes more. Okay. Okay. This one. Here we go. This one is the um, marble. Yep. Marble. Ta-da. All right. I'm going to stick that one down here so you guys can see it. Okay. Some really lovely, lovely colors and a really nice mix. So this is a great one. If you are doing something where you need the texture to kind of go all the directions, this is a great one because the texture is really sort of modeled. Um, I really like that for this reason. And you can see there's just a ton of colors available. Okay, that's marble. Another one that works very much the same way, but has a little different texture is, uh, is this one, which is the glacier. Okay, in the glacier, we have a, just a ton of colors too. And you will notice that we have a lot of the same colors because these all coordinate with our prints. And we make it so that you can do that really easily. This one does have a sort of a line down it. So it works really well for stuffed animals, but it also works great for blankets. It's beautiful for throws because it has this whole, um, yeah, like this texture to it that's just absolutely gorgeous. All right, so those are basically the solid Lux Cuddle. So Lux Cuddle comes in um, some other ones that we're going to go through that are various textures and colors. That's it for the, for those are the ones that are mostly just like a solid color that you're going to coordinate with something. These are great for in your strip quilts. You can use them for, like I said, the self-binding blankets are really good for that. They're great for stuffed animals, wonderful for stuffed animals. Um, the two that I showed you are from Funky Friends Factory. So it's LA the Elephant and Larry the Lion are the patterns that I had there. Um, and that little one is the Kimber Bear from Kimber Bell Designs. All right, let me grab you. So these I'm gonna grab are some funkier ones, all right? So yeah. Um, so this is our forest fox. I'm gonna lay this down so Hawk can, can get that for you guys. This is just super fun. And this one has like the dark background and then um, the other color on top. Okay, super fun. So we're gonna get into some kind of crazy stuff and I'm just gonna show you, these are all gonna work the same and they're gonna be good for all sorts of things like the throws. So if you love making the big Lux throws, these are perfect for that. Uh, I think all of the ones coming up, that's gonna be the thing that I would do most is be throws or stuffed animals. Be gorgeous with it. You can do all sorts of things. Um, also, these are great for apparel, for scarves, for a home deck. Okay, this is our, remember, wild rabbit. Okay. Super. Isn't that great? Like, so one of the things too, is that a lot of times because this does look like a fur, it often gets misnamed as a faux fur. Lux Cuddle is not a faux fur. This is a totally 100% polyester knit fabric. It is not a faux fur. It has a completely different backing. This is machine washable. Faux furs are not. So it's good to keep in mind. So if anybody, you know, calls it a faux fur, you can correct them. It is not, it is a Lux Cuddle, which is a different thing, okay? These are our, uh, this is the Lappin and some other fabrics that are in here. This uh, Lappin is one of my favorites, it's this stripey bit. And we have, we have a jacket made out of this, I think that's on the blog somewhere, that's absolutely beautiful. Uh, so that's a really fun one as well. And we have this in a few different colors, okay? One of my very favorites, that I haven't made a blanket for myself yet, but I'm gonna, is this fawn, okay? So all of these are gonna work the exact same way as the Lux Hide in how you're gonna cut them and sew them. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but I wanna remind you that all of these fabrics, they're about a 10 millimeter nap. They are 
all of them have directional nap going all sorts of ways. And then it has the different colors. Okay. But they're all basically going to work the same. The backing is the same and the nap length is about the same. When I'm working with cuddle, the thing that I've realized is that's where things sort of vary is by the length of the nap and which way the directions of which direction the nap is going. So sometimes the nap is just one direction and sometimes it's kind of modeled and that's going to make a difference in what products I use for it or what projects I make with it. And then also how I sew it how I cut it. Okay. I'm going to grab a couple more for you. Okay. I think we might've gotten out of order. Okay. Here's a zebra. I'm just going to show a bunch of them over here. Okay. So here's a zebra. Here's some more animal prints. This is uh, just a mix of different. I love this one. Isn't that great? Whoa. I want to figure out which one that one is so I can tell you. It's That's marble rose. Super cool. Okay, some really fun stuff. So these are the ones, like I was saying, a lot of times people will think that they are actually an animal and they are not. So they are not animal prints uh, or they are not faux fur. They are animal prints. Okay, so they are animal prints. They are not the other. Okay, so these are fun. This one I have seen. We did this one in the Nutty Nag. We've done a bunch of stuffed animals in this as well as blankets. Ah, oh, this is one of my favorites. It's so, so cool. It's a great one for stuffed animals of all sorts. Okay. One of our favorites that we've just come out with recently is the snowy owl, which people have been loving and I am all over. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Okay. So this is one where you start to see where we're talking about. This one is the elderberry and we've got other elderberry print or this is the elderberry. This one is rose water, I think. Yeah, this is rose water. And you're going to see that we had those colors and other things as well. So I think this is it in hide and how well those will coordinate. And it sort of just makes these colors pop. So if you're doing a luxe throw, I always recommend that you use like a print sort of a luxe a luxe print, a luxe design, and use a solid. And the two of them will go so beautifully together. So we have an elderberry, which is like that purple color. Just beautiful, right? This is a snowy owl. I love it. It's new. And one more animal print for you. This is silver fox, which is another great one. Super popular for throws. Okay. These are in a lot of kits. And this guy, look at that. Super fun stuff. Okay. So if you haven't seen these in stores, you can definitely find all of these listed on our website and you can definitely scroll through there. So even as a consumer, you can scroll through and then let your local quilt shop know which fabrics you love and which ones that you would love for them to have for you. Okay. So I'm going to put these guys back. Whew. That was a lot. Huh. <laughs> all right. So now I've got to move some things because I got a lot of fabric here. I don't know how I ended up with so much fabric. No. <laughs> Wait, I do. I went and got it. I was like, hey, give me all the fabric. <laughs> all right. So here are some others. I'm going to pull them out and show you guys. So these are ones that are different. So this is where we start getting into the weirder stuff, as I like to call it. And so we have the, the flat cuddle, the regular cuddle that we had. And then we had like the hide and all of those Lux cuddles. All of those, like I said, are about 10 millimeters. This is where we start getting into the longer stuff. So the llama, I think, is 20, 15. I can't remember if they'll tell me. Um, maybe someone could correct me. This is a lot longer nap. And so this starts getting a little bit funkier. It's amazing. This is actually what's used for his little mane. Is what I use is the, is the llama for that. Perfect, right? I love the way this stuff works. I've, re I've made blankets out of this. I've made a jacket out of this. You do all sorts of fun things. Uh, someone did ask on the I Love Cuddle group recently if it was actually lighter at the tips. And you can see here it is not. It is a solid color, color all the way through to the top. Okay. This stuff is uh, a little bit different to work with. The biggest thing you're going to want with this is this tool right here. Okay. You want to use this. Beep, <laughs> we get the brand name right. Okay. You want to use this tool because what I do is I will hold this down as it goes underneath the walking foot. So your little, your little piece here, the little metal piece will totally hold it down as it goes under. All right. So make sure that if you're going to work with the llama, you've got yourself a stiletto. Okay. Also look, there's more, even more big, bright fabric and some cuddle dust. <laughs> 
Not sure how that got in there. Okay. <laughs> so some purple, yellow, Kindle peaches, sort. <laughs> all sorts of fun stuff. This is another one that we have. This starts to venture into some all of the thicker stuff. This is our frost, which has the dark background and then the white on top which is very fun too. This is a great apparel one. I've seen this used for jacket collars before and it's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, comes in a bunch of different colors. And you can see those will coordinate really beautifully with the solid as well. I've used this for binding too and it's kind of fun for that. I will say that extra fluff is super lightweight and can be a little bit more of a challenge for bindings. I'll show you the one I like for binding best soon. Okay, then we get to the seal and the seal has been ridiculously popular with people. We love this one too. So I don't know if you could look how thick mm. this is. Check out that nap. That is amazing. Okay. Super thick. I think it's 15 millimeters if I remember right. Okay. It's just beautiful. And this one is actually, you can see it's, it kind of works like a the C3, except that it's 15 millimeters. It's thick. It's really, it's a dense, dense pile on there. So I can't see the backing at all if I scrape it up here. Um, it doesn't come through. It's just absolutely gorgeous. But it is smooth. And so this uh, varies on what you want to use it for. It's beautiful for blankets. I've seen jackets made out of it too. And that is gorgeous. God thick pile. It's so beautiful. It's just lovely. So this is used for all sorts of different things. And you can see it comes in myriad colors. Okay. Absolutely beautiful. So that one, people loved it. And so we decided we would make more. So we, <laughs> so we made some that looks like lace and that's pretty wonderful. <laughs> okay. And that's the same extra thick pile. All right. With this beautiful lace print on it. Let's see if I can get that laid out so you guys can see it. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay. So that's Lux Seal lace. And then we have Lux Seal Tiger. I want to say zebra. So this is Lux Seal Tiger, which is also new and in a variety of different colorways that are just super crazy fun. All right. So this would be extra fun for, uh, I think for young people would love this. Yeah, it's super great. Look at how good that is. Don't you just want to make a little tiger costume right now? If we start now, I'll have time enough for uh, for Halloween. <laughs> super fun, a great mix of colors. And this is also, like I said, that super thick. Look, so I'm going to move this. Here we go. Another pile, another pile down. If you guys ask to see any of these again, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> I will happily dig through and show you anything again. So another one. So then we start getting into like some different sort of fabric. And this is our Demi Rose. Okay. The Demi Rose is an embossed, I think is what we would call it. It is really, really um, just gorgeous. Okay. And this one has these big rose images, which I love to use this for the back of self-binding blankets because when you bring it around to the front you can't really see this design it's just like a pretty cool interesting edge to it and when you look at the back it has these big huge roses on it which is lovely this is in the same sort of style as a few of these others that i'm going to show you so the next one is brooklyn and it's also sort of this embossed sort of thing. Let's see if I can show this to you guys a little better. Okay. So this one has uh, sort of like these rows. It almost looks like it's knitted, which is really great as a, I've used this as a self-binding blanket and I've used it for uh, a throw before. I will tell you that when you cut it normally, and at the end, we'll talk a little bit about cutting. And normally I will tell you to cut it from the back. When you are working with Brooklyn and also with uh, chenille and weave, then you're going to want to cut them from the front because you can see this line. So if I cut this from the front and I would use my little scissors and come right down this little sort of gap between the rows, that's where I would cut it from the front. All right. So this is one of the very few that I'll tell you to cut it from the front. It's really just so you can make sure that you got those lines straight. Um, I made a self-binding blanket. The first self-binding blanket I made from this, I didn't realize that. And so I just cut a big square and I will say that the edges were not um, even. So <laughs> I had a little fixing to do. Yeah, um, did some trimming. <laughs> Every time I learn something. Okay, this is Luna, which is uh, similar. And then it has these big lines. You can't see it so well in the black, but you can sort of see it here that these has these, these sort of ridges that come down and almost these little whorls. 
in here that are really just super cool. I might have gotten out of order, Michael. Sorry. Okay, here comes another one. So this one is a brand new one that we call uh, Oxford. I'll make sure I say it right. Yep, this is one that we used recently in the self-binding blanket tutorial. And I made the small one and I used this. This is another one that you want to make sure that you've cut it straight. So if you were going to cut this line here, I would cut that from the from the front as well to make sure that you've gotten that straight. But otherwise, super great. And it definitely has like this really interesting texture to it. Similar to it is the chinchilla. I'm going to sneeze. I can feel it. If Maybe if I tell you guys I'm going to sneeze, I won't do it. Okay, this is the chinchilla. It does a similar thing. And this, like in the Oxford, you can see it kind of goes this way and then it comes back just a little. That's the way this works is it goes one way and then the other. Okay, chinchilla is lovely. And we have a frosted version of it as well. Okay, this one we call iced chinchilla, which I think is awesome. Check that out. Wouldn't that be a beautiful blanket? Absolutely gorgeous. Okay. Really, mm -hmm. yeah, it's really lovely. And this one is, so these are interesting because, let me show you the edge of this. So you can see the length of the nap and how it varies. Okay, so that's how these things, like each of the fabrics will work a little bit differently. But like these that I'm showing you now, this set of them is really um, the ones that have a little bit more variety going for them. This would be what this is, is like this is a variety of the of the nap, which is different. OK, so one of my very favorites for using for bindings is this, the chenille, which I think is just amazing. And it has a coordinating coordinating. That's not the right word. It has a it has a sister. I read a big question. Oh, OK. Where do you start? Where do you start? <laughs> <laughs> this is when you're an addict and you have all of them because it's amazing. Um, <laughs> You start with simple projects and we have them. We'll talk about it later where you start. But that's a great question <laughs> because really there are so many. And how do you possibly, possibly like even I, I work for the company and there's so many that I'm like, oh, I want to use that. Oh, I want to do that. Oh, I love that. Like, it's true. There are so many. We'll talk about it. But there are some good uses for a few and you could start there for sure. These are Chenille and Heather and I love them for bindings. They're my favorite uh, for that sort of thing. They're great for self-binding blankets as well. I made uh, slippers out of them recently. They turned out super cute. There was on a Sew Together Tuesday fairly recently. We did the pink. I think we actually did that for the Sew Along. I made at least a pair out of them. And this is just like sort of the uh, uh, more like the frosted version or whatever, where we have like a different color in there as well. So these are super cute. This one I used in something fairly recently, I thought. I don't see it here right now. Got rid of that sample, I guess. But I love these for, oh, I know what it was. I was going to show you this. So this uh. is this is the binding. So if you haven't done cuddle binding before, like I said, it's raw edge. We sew it onto one side, we flip it over. And this is the raw edge right here that is just zigzag down. Okay. And you can't really see the zigzags or the raw edge, which is why I love using cuddle for bindings. Okay. Really, really good stuff. So this is the chenille. That's what this is here. All right. Really, really good. Yep. So that's my my big recommendation there is this is perfect for binding. So if you want to if you want to bind just a regular quilt with it, you absolutely can. It doesn't even have to be a cuddle quilt. I have one more, which is the longest nap that we have. Crazy stuff here. This is the shaggy and the frosted shaggy, I believe it's called. Yep. This is 30 millimeter nap. I'm gonna put this down so I can so I can swish it for you guys. Check Ooh. that out. Okay. It is just super fun stuff. I will tell you, this is the longest and it definitely has its own mind about things. So be patient with yourself when you're sewing with, with it. My favorite for this is actually like little uh, pillows and stuff. I think it's super cute and super easy. So uh, this also would work really well for that mane, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, I would. And I'm like, oh, I need to make another lion. Yeah. <laughs> I wish he could just have like a little wig. Yeah, uh, these are these are great, though, and they make <laughs> wonderful stuffed animals for these as well. But they're great blankets and um, throw pillows, too. OK, who I think that's all my boxes are empty now, you guys. So I think we I think we did it. I think we got through all of them. OK, so now, you know, a little bit about all the different cuddles. I'll throw these in the box. 
Ooh, what a cleanup this is going to be. Um, <laughs> but now you know a little bit more about all the different kinds of cuddles. So there is the regular cuddle, and then there's a 10 millimeter pile cuddle, and then there's like the crazier cuddles. And they're super fun, and they're you can make just so many different things with it. I love using the ones that are a little bit crazier. Um, the longer ones, the more textured ones. Those are great for accents on things for your strip quilts. For uh, We did a robe. You could use it for the shawl part of the robe. You could use it for a collar jacket, jacket collar, uh, all that sort of stuff. They're great for that, that type of thing. All right. Okay. So let's talk about... I can't take it. Yeah. Sorry, Jennifer. She's worried about uh, not being able to focus. Me either. Like, this is my life. Uh, so funny. Okay. So let me show you a couple of different things. And we're going to talk about cutting the fabric. All right. So we've got, oh, should I answer? Are they all washable? So let me see if there's any questions that I should answer. Are they all washable? Yes. So um, all of the things that you make with Lux Cuddle or regular Cuddle are all going to be machine washable. It's one of the things about it being 100% polyester is that it is machine washable. The biggest thing is that you need to wash it in cool water and a low heat dryer or a no heat dryer if you can. I always recommend that you don't dry it all the way. So get it mostly dry, take it out, let it finish drying, and then you can throw it in for a fluff cycle and that'll help sort of fluff all of those fibers back up again. There's a couple of things you really don't want to do. And the biggest one is that you do not want to use a fabric softener, whether it's a um, the, the liquid that you put in there, some of the detergents now will come with a fabric softener. So make sure that you're using a fabric that, or a um, liquid soap that does not have a fabric softener in it. Okay. And there's no need for like the dryer sheets either. So you want to make sure there's no fabric softener. What that does is it sticks to the fibers and will, um, yeah, sort of ruin the fabric. So it's really important not to do that and to not over dry it. So, other minkies will often melt with overheat. We have not had that problem, but it will change the texture of the fabric. So keep it, keep it away from heat and keep it far, far away from fabric softeners. Those are the two things. But all cuddle, all cuddle, lux cuddle, all of it is machine washable for sure. Okay. That's really important because we we're talking about the comparison with faux fur. Faux fur is not machine washable. It is dry clean only. So it's a completely different thing. It also has a different feel to it. The Lux Cuddle is just um, incredibly soft. If you've worked with it at all, you know it, the softness is incomparable. It's really, it's kind of amazing stuff. Okay. So I'm going to go through a couple of little things about the backings and cutting, and then we will have lots of questions. So um, we'll get those ready and answer all the questions that you have, or at least, you know, the ones you came up with today. All right, so um, I wanted to show you a couple of different things. I'm going to come over here and show on Hawk's camera. Um, so this is the backing for a couple of different kinds of fabric. So this is the Sherpa, okay, which is another one. It's similar to the Llama. Sorry, this is one that's been... It's white. Been, it's, been, do. it's white. Yeah, you can't really see it super well. Um, it's just going to blow out the camera. Sorry. Um, so this is Sherpa, and you can see this backing, and it stretches in all the directions, okay? So it stretches more this way, so I know this is my width. It still does stretch this way, that's my length, but it's because of the way that it's made with the backing. The llama is like this as well, is that what this is? Yeah, the llama is a little bit differently, but it also stretches less this way. It stretches a lot this way, so it stretches more than some of the other fabrics. The shaggy is the same, okay? So it has the same backing. These backings are different than the rest of the cuddle. So this is a rose cuddle. This is Heather. Okay. And these are, this is just a C3. Okay. So these backings, these are all the same. These are a little bit different and these have more stretch. So these are going to be a little bit more um, finicky to work with, I guess. You're just going to have to be a little bit more careful as you're going. The biggest thing is not stretching while you're sewing the fabric. And that's really what people tend to want to do, unfortunately. I'm going to show you really quick. This is a faux fur. So this is a faux fur, super thick. It's one of our faux furs because we also make those too. But you can see this backing is very, very different than this. Okay, those are just two different things. This one is going to be machine or not machine washable at all, dry clean only. These are machine washable polyester knit. Okay, this is something different. Okay, so don't get the two confused. That is it's not, acrylic, right? it's acrylic and polyester, right? So gotcha. they don't, it, you can't wash it in the machine and right. have it turn out right. Okay, the this is a 
Digital print, this is a traditional print. You can see the digital print has slightly different backing, but it will all work exactly the same. All right, so when you, when you see the backings, know that the ones that are, these looser ones are a little bit different to work with. These are all gonna be exactly the same. All right, so there we've got those. So let me show you some cutting techniques. I'm gonna show you with these few little samples I've got here. Okay, so this is, sorry, I need to bring you over here. So okay. this is the Sherpa, and I'm gonna use my scissors for this, okay? So the, I'm gonna show you with the, with the rotary cutter and with the scissors. I don't cut it with the blade, I usually cut it with the scissors. And what I'll do is I'll mark, mark what I need to do, and I'm just gonna cut it with the scissors right now. And I can just cut, come in here and I can cut the backing. You can sort of see how I can just cut, you can see just the scissor under there, okay? I can cut just the backing and have really no mess at all. Okay, I'm gonna cut this whole thing this way. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut it this way because I'm gonna show you when we do some of the others, it makes a difference which direction you're cutting it. Okay, so this, if I cut it with the scissors, I can pull this apart and I have zero mess. Okay, I can take some of this and I can pull it off, but it will totally stick to the other side of the fabric. So I can control my mess really easily. That's the parts that I accidentally cut and I can just pull that off. So super, super easy to work with. Okay, and I'm just gonna use my scissors with that. I can use a rotary. Okay. I'm going to cut it across and I end up with a little bit more mess because it's cut off the bits and then it cut, gives me a really nice raw or yeah, nice smooth raw edge. So if you have trouble seeing the edge of your fabric, this is one way to do it is just with the rotary cutter. You just will have a little bit more mess. All right. So I'm going to clean that up. All right. But these, the, the Sherpa and the Llama surprisingly have very little mess for being as long as they are. It's sort of just how they how they work. Um, then we have things like this is the rose cuddle. Okay. Maybe I should do this last because it's gonna get messy when I cut it with the rotary. <laughs> okay. We'll talk about the vacuum. Here's, we'll talk about the vacuum exactly. Okay. So this is my lengthwise, this is my widthwise. I'm always gonna cut it from the back. And I'm gonna show you how I do this. So I've got my little silver marker and I've got a ruler. We're gonna hope my marker still has some juice in it. Oh, look, it does. Okay, so I can, I don't know if you guys can see that because it's pretty light. Okay. A different angle. okay, you can see if you can, I can see it, but let me see if I can get my chalk marker to show up on here. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see. Yep. Oh, that's a little bit better. Okay. Um, I've heard of people also using soap that you can use on there, all sorts of things. If I am using my ruler, I will often mark it first, and then I come back and cut it. And the reason is because I can accidentally shift this. If I've already drawn my line, I know exactly where to put this and where it needs to be. So that if my ruler should shift a little, I'm going to notice because I've already drawn a line there. Okay, we're going to cut this with the rotary and we're going to see all of the mess that comes off of here. Okay. <laughs> I try really hard not to move this too much. The more you move it, the more this stuff comes off. All right. That's what happens is people tend to cut it and then move it. And I totally did this when I was, you know, young in my cuddle sewing and like four years ago. And I would totally do that. And what happens is you end up with a mess everywhere. So I'm gonna show you now how I do it with this little blade. So this is with the um, Ulfa SAC-1 blade. Okay, this is a game changer. So if you have not wanted to sew with Minky because it is messy, I will show you. You can make cuddle not messy, hardly at all. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I drew my line. You can, well, you can see it a little bit, it looks like. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna hold some pressure here and I'm just gonna drag this blade down the back of it. And I'm just gonna kind of, drag it and peek under it, make sure I'm basically on my line. Do a little bit at a time and I just keep some pressure on it, okay? And as I open that up, you're gonna see that what's happened is that nap has stayed on there. I've cut the backing fabric and not the front, okay? So where this one, we have a whole lot of mess that's come off of it and more that's trying to. This one, we don't, 
Okay, so that's the difference there. This is why I use this little blade. So then I'm gonna take my handy dandy vacuum and I'm just gonna vacuum this up real quick. Okay, so one of the things that people often suggest is that you is that you simply cut it and vacuum it, which you can, but honestly, if you cut it with this blade first, you have so little mess. And then what happens is when you have this raw edge, it comes over and it looks really nice when you're doing a binding or a self-binding blanket. All right, so super duper easy. I will show you on here. So when people complain about how messy it is, I often say you have not sewn with the really messy stuff because cuddle three, not messy, okay? Little bit's going to come off. That's the lengthwise. Here's the widthwise. The widthwise, I'm going to get a little bit more mess. Okay, not a whole lot, but there it is. Teeny little bit of mess. All right, and that's because I've cut off the edge of the nap. Cuddle three is very little mess. The um, yeah, the reputation it has for being a messy fabric is sort of unearned because it's very little mess. And honestly, I'm just going to take it, I'm going to wipe it up and throw it away. Then I can vacuum it, no big deal. If you are cutting a lot of it, so one of the things that I like to do is I like to cut everything. I cut it all at once and I will take it and then I just sort of push it over to one side of my board and I will cut all of my pieces for whatever project it is that I'm doing. And I cut all of those pieces, I put them to the side. Then I can take a wet washcloth, I can wipe down my board and then I take everything and I just actually just pick up the board and you can take it with you, put it into the dryer and then let it tumble around on low heat or no heat for a few minutes and that will tumble all of the cuddle dust off. Okay, so if you have struggled with the mess that cuddle can make, there are several things that you can do. So using the knife will help, okay, the, um, the Ulfa blade. That will help. Using the micro serrated scissors will also do the same sort of thing. You're just going to take tiny little cuts like I showed you with the Sherpa. Okay. And then the other thing that you're going to do is just throw it into the dryer for a few minutes. Let it knock off that cuddle dust. And then when you're sewing with it, it's going to be totally fine. All right. It's really important when you do that, what we call the dryer trick. When you do that, that you use the wet washcloth too. Because what happens when you throw it into the dryer is it kind of can build up a little bit of static if it's in there without the wet washcloth. So having that that in there will not only help kind of knock the fabric around and bump off the cuddle dust, but it will also help to keep down the static electricity that can build up in a dryer. All right, so once you've done that, it's super easy to sew with. And um, let me see if there was another one I wanted to show you with the cutting. I think that was it with the cutting and with the drying. Uh, we've also talked about all of the tools. I think that might be everything I wanted to share with you guys. So, oh, I was gonna show you that. Thanks, Hawk. See, that's why I have him here. Good help. Um, so the other thing I wanted to show you guys was, <laughs> was um, if you are a quilter and you're coming at this from like, I really don't know what I'm doing. There's some good places to start, but there's an also a great way to sort of like um, bring the two worlds together. And that's really how I started falling in love with this fabric is using it as a backing. So this one is actually cuddle on both sides, which you can do. So this is a sorbet and this is a cuddle three. So I'll put this here. And you can take a look at it. So this is just long arm, just a little bit. It's just me playing with my tiny little long arm and seeing what I could do. I have a little grace quilting machine that I got uh, from Cali Quilt Co. And so I've been playing with that. And I did the Cuddle 3. I think it's scarlet on that side. And then this is the Sorbet. And you could see I just did white thread in there. And it's only really where, you know, it doubles up and I didn't do a very good job. That you can see the thread. It's kind of amazing to me. Like if you pull back and sort of look at the whole thing, it's amazing to me that you can't see the thread in there at all. Like it's just an interesting design that it becomes the same way here. And let me see, is that, I can't see any thread color in there. Maybe I, no, there it is. I used a white in there as well. Way deep in there, there's a white. So this is just <laughs> white thread and you can't even tell. So that's the great thing. <laughs> with um, with cuddle is that it just sort of like sinks in the thread just sinks in so when I was saying that you could absolutely use just the gray thread you can and uh, it will just sink inside and you'll never see it again so uh, okay so questions let me have them so Michael has some questions in here uh, I see do you need to cut off the selvages I do not cut off the selvages unless I am doing something where they're going to show and I think they look weird so <laughs> sort of a vague answer, but most of the time you don't need to. So you do, definitely don't need to from, um, 
for like the Lux Rose when you're using it for cuddle strip quilts for the strips. You don't need to cut off the sewage for any of those. It's absolutely not required. The only time that I do is if I were doing like a self-finding blanket or something where the raw edge was going to show. And sometimes that selvage will be a little bit, a little bit funky looking. Let me see. Um, this is actually, this is one I'll have, I'll show you that. Um, that is, it's the selvage on it. So I can flip this and you can see this is the selvage still, but it absolutely looks fine. Like I would use that for a, an edge and it would be okay. I wouldn't feel at all bad about having, having that show because this side is the selvage, but this side does not look bad. So sometimes it'll look like I said, just a little bit weird. And I don't necessarily want that to show. So I always kind of just look at it and see if it'll work. It doesn't change the way that the fabric works at all. So absolutely fine. Okay, next question we've got. What type of vacuum? Um, uh, so what kind of vacuum do I use? I use a is it a black and decker? It is. It's black a black and decker. And decker. <laughs> now I'm not so sure. It's a black and decker. Um, the biggest, I love that vacuum. I've, I've had a few of them. They work really, really well. They haven't broken until they got dropped. Oopsie. Um, so that, Sorry. <laughs> so that happens, but they have worked really, really well and I use them all the time. So it's been great. Um, absolutely love it. The biggest thing, if you're looking for a hand vac or you're using a hand vac that you have, the biggest thing is to remember that you want a vent that vents out the back and not out the sides because it'll blow your cuddle dust all over your table if it vents out the sides. So have it vent out the back and you'll be doing much, much better. And like I said, I tend to just vacuum as I go a little bit. I vacuum it up when I'm done. Um, giving a good shake works really well too. The careful cutting makes a huge difference in how much mess you have though. And it's really, really important to get rid of that mess before you get to your sewing machine. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, and make sure that you have uh, downloaded that that power or the um, presentation that we have, the PDF that's on our blog, you can head over to the blog uh, on a different tab and go get that. And then you can kind of, you know, add to that your notes and stuff for what you want to use and also enter our, down, our, our giveaways. So let me see. Um, baking double sided blankets. How do you prevent the edges from twisting? Okay, so I think I know what you mean. And what happens when you're doing like a double-sided throw and you're putting the two sides together, what happens is sometimes one side will push and you end up with sort of, um, yeah, a little bit of a twist in the front fabric. The thing that I have done to stop that from happening is I use those jumbo wonder clips. And those jumbo wonder clips, let me grab them real quick. Here's a couple of them. So this isn't a perfect example, but you can see how far in these guys will go. So as I'm sewing the edge here, if I were sewing this here, if I have this as a wide, these wide jumbo clips on here, I can actually hold a lot of it down and it won't twist. So the other thing as I do is I will pin, I will clip here and then what did I do with my pins? Here, let me just show you on your camera, Huck. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to pretend that this is, this has been stitched and I've turned it inside out and I'm going to top stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to then pin here and I'm going to clip here and I'm probably <laughs> going to do it more like this so that it kind of goes clip, pin, clip, pin, and then I'm going to stitch here. Okay. So one of the things that I always recommend when you are working with the cuddle fabrics is that you pin on the other side of where you're going to sew. So if I'm going to sew a line at two inches, I'm going to have my pins at two and a half or three inches away from this edge, as well as some sort of of clips or pins holding it down here. Then when I sew in between here, the fabric can't move because what wants to happen is this wants to shift and then it starts to get that little twist on there, which isn't any fun at all. Okay. So this is what I suggest that you do. And always make sure that when you're putting your pins in, you're going to sew toward the tip of the pin and you can just take the pins out. All right. Uh, let's see. Next question. If I can scroll up there, is there a double-sided cuddle? There was, and there may be in the future. So uh, we had something called spa cuddle that you can actually find in some stores still. We've stopped producing it and um, it's sort of taken a hiatus. There is rumor that it might come back. So we'll see, but there is double, the double-sided cuddle, spa cuddle, I think is how it's phrased. Uh, I know that Red Roxy Quilt Co. in Iowa has some. I'm not sure who else has it, but I know I have seen it at other stores. It is available out there just a little bit. Uh, so keep an eye and see if we see if we come back, back for more, what would be the best way to bind or finish the raw edges? So this would be on a double-sided cuddle. You could absolutely bind it any way that you want with a cuddle would be beautiful. 
You can bind it with cotton. You can bind it with a um, satin. And we have a silky satin that you can use to bind those with. Any Anything will actually bind that. And they're super beautiful. I've been really lazy and I made myself a I made myself a blanket using the double-sided cuddle when I first started working for the company so years ago and I just took two yards and then I threw it on my bed. I didn't bind it at all and it worked out great. So um, yeah, you can bind it or not. And what are the best fabrics to use for the self binding blankets? So there are a ton of fabrics that work really, really well. I would say the ones that I like the most I love having a print in the middle and then a solid on the outside. I like to use a, I guess just a print. So it's a smoother one in the center and then a luxe cuddle for the outside. That really depends on what you want to do with it and what you, um, what your look is that you're going for. I love the hide, the heather, uh, marble glacier. Those are my favorites for the self binding blankets, just because the texture goes all the way. And we have uh, a raw edge on that self binding blanket. So when you do that, and you cut it with the blade, the edge is just going to come over really nicely and sort of hide all of your stitches. It works out great. Okay, let's see. Uh, what kind of cutting board? So your cutting mat really uh, is personal preference. I this The one I have today is from Ulfa. I really like that one. Uh, I know Omnigrid makes one and I also have one from DIY Style that is a magnetic cutting board. So whatever you want to use is what you can use. Just make sure that it's self-healing and that you take care of it. So cleaning it is really important, which reminds me that if you are working with the cuddle fabrics and you get some of the naps stuck into the board, What's happening is your blade is dulling and you're pressing harder to get it to cut. So it's important to remember to take notice that when that happens, that you need to replace your blade. All right. I know it's it sometimes feels like you're replacing your blade all the time, but it's important to be able to do that when it starts getting a little bit dull. And make sure that you have you have a fresh blade because it will make a huge difference in how well your fabric cuts and how well it treats your board so cutting in different places and using a nice fresh blade is really important not cutting too hard um, harder than necessary so uh, another comment i made my first baby blanket and used polyester thread but accidentally used cotton bobbin thread will this be a problem do i have to redo it i say no if it's for a baby they're not gonna they're not gonna put too much uh too much stress into that probably and you're gonna be fine just remember for next time to use polyester uh, for both the top and the bobbin all right. Can you base double gauze to cuddle to make a baby blanket? You can absolutely use our gauze and cuddle together. We have lots of different projects we've done that. That's another great way to do a self-binding blanket is that you use the embrace double gauze in the center and then use a luxe cuddle for the outside edge. I like to do a white behind my double gauze. So I use white double gauze and then I use a print double gauze and I use that for the center. It makes it a little heftier and it also keeps the colors really nice and bright. So that's my recommendation for using the gauze with the self-binding blanket. Uh, is it true that sewing minky will ruin price your machines? Absolutely not. So there are some definite um, ideas about using minky that are completely wrong. And I will tell you the biggest mistake that people you do is that they will take the fabric, they will cut it and they take it straight to their machine. If you do that, as you saw, even with the cuddle three, there is some cuddle dust, as we like to call it, that comes off when you cut it because you're cutting the nap. What happens when you do that is you take it over and you shove that directly into your bobbin case. That is not what we want to do. So we want to make sure that we are cleaning it and we get rid of it by shaking it, by taking it to the dryer, by vacuuming it, all of the above, whatever you want to do to get rid of that extra cuddle dust and then you sew with it. And then absolutely it will not do anything different to your machine than uh, any other fabric will. So I find that I clean my bobbin case and that whole thing. I do it probably once a week and I sew a lot and I will totally admit that, but I clean that out. I take my little brush. I clean off all the lint around the, the needle, the needle screw and all of that. And then the top and the feed dogs and underneath in the bobbin case for machines. I have a Bernina as well as a baby lock. Both of them have sewn with it beautifully. The Bernina, it needs to be oiled frequently. And that's really important when you're working with any fabric. So any of the the maintenance that you would do for a machine isn't any different if you are sewing a lot of cuddle, sewing cuddle at all. It just needs to be that you have cleaned the fabric first. That's the biggest the biggest issue that people have is that they take it straight from the cutting board to the machine. And that's a no-no. Make sure that you've gotten that cuddle dust off first. Okay. Um, I haven't had it. Yeah. And I sew a lot and I haven't had it do anything to the machines. It's absolutely fine. All right. So we have any other questions, Mike? 
We'll see if we can get some. Otherwise, if you've shared the video, we appreciate it. We have a winner for today who will win a kit, and her name is Lori J from Arizona. So congratulations, Lori. Uh, we will get a hold of you. Or you can send a me direct message to us and we will get your address and all that good stuff and send you a cuddle quilt kit. So that'll be super fun. We can talk about that, which one you want to get. And then if you haven't entered to win, make sure that you head over to the blog. You can download the reference sheet. You can get some more information on using cuddle fabrics. This video will live there as well. But you can also enter to win to give away to get uh, one of the 12 rows that we are giving away this week. So uh, it is National Cuddle Up Day, I believe is the name of the holiday, which is truly like an actual day uh, tomorrow. So we're giving away these blankets so that you can cuddle up for the special day. And then you can cuddle up anytime when you sell all these different products. So I recommend again to join our I Love Cuddle group. We have um, a great group of consumers who are over there sewing all sorts of things with Cuddle. We get to show off our projects. We get to ask questions. We get to, you know, problem solve together. And it's really great. So I recommend that you join us there. Also, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as following us on Facebook and get alerts for whenever we're doing lives. So we'll be back every week. We have them coming up for the rest of the year. We've got so many Sew Together Tuesdays planned. It's great. Okay, we're going to have a ball with this. So thank you so much, everybody, for coming. I appreciate it. We will be back next week with a cute little pillow. And uh, yeah, we'll see you then. Happy sewing. <laughs>